Now then, this year is the 70th anniversary of partition, when India was divided and the reign of the British Raj came to an end. It was a bloody chapter in the history of the region, as we know. A million people died in the violence that followed, particularly in the western region of Punjab, which was cut in two by that border, creating a new Islamic country, Pakistan. It is the subject, it's a great rich story, it's the subject of a new film by the British director Gurinda Chada, which uh, examines the last days of the Raj and centres on the household of the last Viceroy of India, Lord Mountbatten, played uh, by Hugh Bonneville in the film. I'm delighted to say that uh, Gurinda is with us. It's great to have you with us in the studio, thank, thank you, you very much. I'll tell you what, Gurinda, before we chat, mm. why don't we have a little look at some of the film and then we can pick up on some of the mm. themes. So let's have a look to be the last Viceroy of India, and I shall carry out the role with great pride. Chief Kumasa. He's the new boy. We have something in common there. You think India is ready to rule itself? We've learned from the best. From now on, there'll be more Indians of all faiths round our table. We can change a lot, and we absolutely have it. We came to give India back her freedom, not to tear her apart. Well, Gurinda, I have to say, it looks fantastic. Mm. I mean, it's so rich in terms of, you know, it's a visual feast, but it's a very powerful story. Yes. Now, where, how did you approach this? Well, I wanted to tell this story on the biggest canvas I could. And here in Britain, British cinema is known around the world for making these huge epic costume dramas. Yeah. So I chose that as my genre to tell this big epic political story, but at the same time, it's a very intimate story because mm. it's personally related to me. Explain that a little more. So, the, India was partitioned in 1947, and the history that I, was, uh, I grew up with was that Mountbatten came out to India to hand India back, but we started fighting, and so he had no choice but to divide the country. Um, that's what I grew up with. In my research for the film, I found out that that actually isn't the truth. Um, and not many people want to talk about partition, but a lot of people living in Britain today uh, are still influenced by it because our grandparents went through it, particularly my mine. Uh, my grandmother uh, had five small children with her at the time, and in her house, overnight, things started changing for the worse, and an army truck came and said, right, get on the truck, you're out. She was put on a train with her five children, uh, three days, no, no um, food, no water, and her youngest child actually died of starvation on, on that train. Um, so many terrible things happened to a lot of people, but most people want to sweep it under the carpet. So by making this film, hopefully I'm talking about it. You're certainly talking about it, making a big statement. If someone would say to, would say to you, what is the main change in the traditional narrative? that you're offering, what would that be? Well, Mountbatten is sort of reviled uh, by many for being the man, you know, who, who everyone blames for partitioning India. But what my story reveals was that there were plans to partition India long before Mountbatten came on the scene. Well, I'm going to ask you to pause there for a second, mm. Linda, because uh, we've got some very nice images here of, of Mountbatten, of course, at the time. Yes. But what I'd now like to do is mm. to just take one excerpt from the, uh, from the film where we get a sense of the character that you're portraying, if I may put it that yes. way. Yes, okay. Yes. So we have the man himself there, but Hugh Bonneville in the film, yes. who portrays, I suppose some people might think, a rather different kind of person. But anyway, let's have a look. Well, this is... We're going to get this down to a fine art. I never want to spend more than two minutes dressing. Yes, Excellency. Uh, not Excellency till after the ceremony. So we'll do. Right. Socks, no suspenders. Braces, leave on the trousers. Have you seen that before? Hmm? No, sir. No, sir. How much time do we waste buttoning trousers? One just steps into these and the whole of the Navy uses them now. This morning, I'd say we're pulling out all the stops. And... Dilip Singh, isn't it? Yes, sir. Lord Wavell speaks very highly of you. Thank you, sir. Honour to serve. And... Cheet Kumar, sir. From Punjab. He's the new boy. Well, Kumar, we have something in common there. Now... Are we ready?
13 minutes. Hmm. We'll do better next time. Well, well <laughs> tell us a little about that and what you were trying to convey. Well, interestingly, th we did a lot of research in this film. We read a lot of books. We looked at a lot of British documents that had been, um, you know, uh, hidden until recently. Um, but we also met people and we were lucky enough in Mumbai to meet uh, Mount Batten's ADC of the time, who told us that he was a very vain man, mm -hmm. and for him, his 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 uh, outfits had to be pressed within an inch of themselves. His medals had to be polished, and he spent a lot of time focusing on his appearance. He loved the whole pomp and splendour of being the last viceroy, um, and so we wanted to convey that in the film. That certainly comes across. What about the man and the character? who provided the leadership. Mm. Um, what did you make of that and what are you trying to convey there? Well, I think what the film does is look at all the leaders involved. There was Mountbatten, Nehru, Gandhi, Jinnah, um, and, and humanise them uh, to say, well, if you were in their position, what would you have done? These are the decisions they made. Were they the right decisions or not? Mm. With Mountbatten, what we learn very soon in is that actually he was not a politician. But I believe he was sent out there precisely because he wasn't a politician. He was a naval man. Um, so there were all kinds of things going on in the corridors of power in England that he didn't know about. And so very soon in, you realise he's, he's in above him, his head, you know, here. And his wife actually was a lot more astute uh, than he was politically. Again, um, you know, we, we're seeing some of the images from the time. I'd, mm. I'd like, what I'd like now, if we mm. can, Grinda, is to have a look at another section of the film. This is talking about religious tensions. Yes. And um, the religious tensions, clearly, um, which we can still talk about in very powerful terms today. So yes. let's have a look at this. She doesn't want to dance. Watch what you're doing, huh? He wasn't doing anything. It's fine. You dance with your own kind. Mohsen, bhai, please. My own kind. Calm down. Have some respect. Oh, 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 what does that theme lead us towards and that scene? Well, there was communal tensions, obviously. It, there were terrible riots, a lot of violence. But the seeds of that really come from 1857, when there was the big mutiny, uh, or first war of independence, depending on how you look at it. Um, and all Indians banded together against the British. And they nearly won. But the British actually ended up quelling that mutiny. Um, and they were very worried. So from that point on, Lord Curzon introduced the divide and rule rule and so Indians were divided Muslims were separate Hindus were separate Sikhs were separate all had separate schools textbooks so really to the idea was to introduce those divisions so that uh, politicians could make political gain from them and, and in this clip that we've yeah. just seen you see that you know that's all being ramped up when we started the chat, you, you talked about your personal stake. Yeah. Um, and I know that 10, 11 years ago, you made a programme um, uh, in the BBC series, Who Do You Think You Are? Yes. And uh, you returned to Pakistan at that point. So I'm um, just showing some of the images yes. now, but tell us about this. Well, this was my first time back to my ancestral town and I was reticent about going to Pakistan but the welcome that I got is you see they're throwing flower petals at me um, they said welcome you're our daughter they gave me this beautiful shawl I was just shocked at Lovely this welcome Very nice. um, and it was there that I met people refugees who themselves had come from India to live in my grandfather's house now that, and at that point I realized I really wanted to make a film about partition but as much about the people's partition uh, as, as as well as the politics. Was that the moment that the, the, the dream of this film started? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there, in Pakistan, uh, while I was doing the Who Do You Think You Are? Um, I'm bound to mention too, because that was 11 years ago, and far more recently, just again in the context of the film, um, you've met the Queen. 
Yes. Um, and uh, I don't want to give any secrets away, but uh, did, what did you share in terms of conversations about this? Because the Queen, of course, has a, um, a very, very acute interest in that part of the world. Well, absolutely. I mean, just as it's my family story, it's also her family story. Um, and, of course, her son, uh, Prince Charles, has a very personal interest in, in Mountbatten, his favourite uncle. Um, I was introduced to the Queen and she said... Um, I've seen your trailer. Ah. And I was like, you know, quite shocked. And she'd obviously seen it on television. She said, I'm looking forward to seeing the film. Will I like it? Mm. And I said, well, you're featured in it. Uh, <laughs> not quite the same. <laughs> not quite the same, but there is a reference to her getting yeah. married because, yeah. of course, Lady Pamela Mountbatten left India to uh, go and be a bridesmaid at her wedding. What do you want audiences to take away from this? Because, um, as I said at the start, it's a great spectacle. Mm. Um, it's very rich in terms of its texture. Mm. Um, you're, you're providing your own brand of narrative, if I can call it that. Yes, well, it's a British-Asian yes. view on the history. It's yeah. our shared history, you know, both the British Raj and Asian history. And being British-Asian, I'm in that unique position where I can stand back and look at it from everyone's point of view. So for me, I hope it's a very balanced film about turbulent events in our, in our history, but now moving forward 70 years later, I think it's a timely reminder of what happens when politicians or leaders start using hate to divide us because it can only lead to destruction and death in my opinion. Corinna, it's, it's fantastic to talk to you. I wish you well with the film. Thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it from top to bottom. Thank you. Um, but uh, we, we need your support. Uh, British cinema needs British audiences. Well, we're very happy to give that support. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, so let me just say very clearly that it's in Viceroy's house, it's in cinemas from tomorrow and of course because it's the news channel, Mark Kermode will be here to review it. I'm sure he'll do it kindly, um, <laughs> on the film review at 5.45 tomorrow. So join Mark for that. But Gunda, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Nice to see you.